Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at synchronization primitives in AsyncIO. Now the full text version of this tutorial can be found at TutorialEdge.net and I'll leave a link to this tutorial in the description below. So I feel the first thing we should cover is why are these synchronization primitives important? Well, when it comes to programming concurrent systems, you have to try and ensure that your program is free from a little thing called race conditions. A race condition typically occurs when multiple workers try to modify a shared value or variable concurrently and they start to overwrite each other and start to produce erroneous results due to the timing issues. So it's because of these race conditions that we have to utilize these things known as synchronization primitives. And when it comes to synchronization primitives within AsyncIO, we have a number to choose from. These are all based loosely on the threading module equivalent and tend to have the same API with which we can work with them. So the first synchronization primitive that we're going to look at is a lock. Now, the best analogy to describe how a lock works is to imagine there's a queue of people trying to access a bathroom. One person would go in and lock the bathroom door and in doing so prevent another person from coming in whilst they're using the bathroom. So in computing terms, when we lock something, we essentially prevent someone else from entering the same critical section of code and accessing a locked resource whilst it's in use. So let's now see how we can implement this in Python. So we're gonna start off by importing async.io and we're also gonna import time. Now we're gonna define an my worker coroutine. So async def my worker and its parameter or one of the parameters it's gonna take in is our lock instance. So print attempting to attain lock and then we're gonna use with await lock to try and attain the lock before entering our critical section of code. And within our critical section of code, we're gonna simply do currently locked and we're gonna sleep for two seconds. And then once this exits, once we release the lock, we're then gonna print unlocked from critical section. Next thing we want to do is define an async main coroutine. So async def main. And within this, we're gonna instantiate our instance of our lock. So lock equals async io dot lock. And that's uppercase. Next, we're gonna go and await async io dot wait. And we're gonna pass in two instances of my worker, passing in the same lock that we just instantiated up here. My worker lock. Finally, outside of our uh, main coroutine, we are going to create a loop. So loop equals async.getEvent loop. We're then going to run this until it's complete. So loop dot run until complete. And we're going to pass in our main coroutine. And finally, we're going to print all the workers completed before then closing our loop. Now, when we try and run that, Python 3.6, test.py, you should see that one of our coroutines attempts to lock or attain the lock. It then goes into its critical section and prints out currently locked and sleeps for two seconds before then un unlocking. And then our second coroutine comes in, attains the lock, runs its critical section, and then consequently unlocks the lock again. So just to clarify, if you had a variable that was getting touched by multiple workers, um, you would do so within here and this would then guarantee that only one worker could update, modify, delete, whatever from that variable or array at the one time. So now that we've looked at locks in async.io, let's have a look at queues and implementing a communication system between multiple coroutines in a synchronized fashion. So 
In this example, we're going to be creating a news producer coroutine and a news consumer coroutine. The producer coroutine is going to be publishing new items onto our queue every one second. And these items are just going to be an, a random integer between one and five. And our news consumer is going to try and get any items on the queue as quickly as possible. So let's start by defining our producer. So async def news producer. This is going to take in our my queue instance. And whilst true, we're going to await async.io.sleep for one second. And then we're going to print out that we're putting a news item onto the queue. Before then awaiting my queue dot put and random dot rand and between one and five. And before we forget, up here we're going to import random. And below this, we're going to do async def news consumer. And we're going to have two parameters here. So one's going to be an ID of our consumer, and the second is going to be the queue. Within this, we are going to want to well true. And we're going to do print consumer attempting attempting can't spell today to get from Q and we're going to format our ID into this string and we're then going to try and do item equals await my Q dot get and below this we're going to do if item is none break otherwise we're going to print out that our consumer and again we're going to pass in the ID consumed article with ID and we're going to format a string ID and the item. So down here in our async main function, we're going to want to do the following. So take out this uh, lock and we're going to define my queue equals asyncio dot q. Um, we're going to pass in the loop and we're also going to pass in our max size, which will be 10 in this instance. Next, what we want to do is we want to add the loop to our main parameter of our main coroutine and make sure we pass that in here as well. We're then going to call async io wait and we're going to call news producer passing in my queue and news consumer again passing in the id and the my queue. Uh, we're actually going to put in two of these just so we can see an instance of two consumers consuming from the same queue. So down here, Python 3.6, text.py. And you should see that every one second, a new item is put onto the queue. And either our first consumer or our second consumer will then start to pop items or get items from our queue, like so. So these are the only two synchronization primitives we'll be covering in this tutorial, but it's important to note that there are others. So there are events and conditions, but we'll be covering them in a further tutorial. Now, if you found this tutorial useful or, or wish to support the channel, then please leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more Python-based tutorials. Cheers.